Hi, friends. It's Randy and Jess, and we're going to cut the bullshit. And let's get into women's mental health. Welcome to the podcast, Unapologetically All Over the Place with Randy and Jess, two psychotherapists, as we talk about women's mental health issues and how it's all normal. In this episode, we're going to talk about ADHD and task avoidance and procrastivity. What is procrastivity? And that's a mouthful. (laughs) It is. It is. It's something I do all the time. (laughs) So we're going to also go into the four patterns of avoidance for ADHDers. Okay. How to combat task avoidance with techniques like uh, RAIN, SMART goals, and chunking. And then stick with us to the end because we're going to go ahead and give you some steps to help keep yourself on track. And we all need them. And Jess and I are the masters of not staying on track. Right? We are very good at finding out all this information because we uh, try to implement it all the time. All the time. Okay, so have you ever thought, why am I cleaning right now when I have taxes to do? What the heck was I just doing? Oh, damn, my ADHD got me again. And now I did nothing that I was supposed to do. Uh, maybe I can get all these little things done, like all of the things on my list, and I'll just feel a little bit better. Ooh, ooh, I know. I'm going to get my Christmas cards together right now because it's not even December <laughs> instead of actually doing the pile of work that I'm supposed to be doing. Right. There's so many things that you can apply this to when you have ADHD or if you are just great at procrastinating. Right. So, okay, task avoidance. I, we're going to break up procrastivity and task avoidance. Task avoidance is a series of like thoughts, behaviors um, that basically put us off doing like the task we're supposed to do. Right. Like what we need to be doing, we're or avoiding. Should. Mm -hmm. or should be doing. Um, We don't really want to do it, but it needs to be done. There's another thing. We're going to talk about how we can cope with that and deal with the stress that comes with that. Well, task avoidance is actually a form of coping. I mean, it is a poor coping skill, but it is a coping skill for like eliminating short-term stress. Most of us who do it are ADHDers. Yes. It's part of our, you know, executive dysfunctioning brain. Right. And this is actually like very technical, actually, is having a deficit in your executive function, which means when you have ADHD, your brain does not think a certain way. And so you're at a deficit. Mm -hmm. You, You just can sometimes not take the steps that everyday typical brain can take. Well, and sometimes these these task avoidance happens because we want to be perfect mm-hmm. or we're we're afraid of feeling like a failure, right? Right. So then we end up doing everything else but that one thing. Yeah. And that's very common too with ADHD is like uh, perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And I do that too. Like I'll be like, if I can't do this like 120%, well, I'm not going to do it at all. And then it's like, wait, but it needs to get done. You're like, no, 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 I'm going to put it off. Or sometimes you're right, not being able to finish something perfectly, Mm -hmm. right? If I can't finish this, then I'm just going to wait till the perfect time to make it perfect. Yeah, or getting so overwhelmed that you just completely shut down, which is something that is very typical. And that happens to me a lot too. Like, I'll just be like, there's so much. And then I'm just like, okay, well, I'm not going to do any of it. And that doesn't get you anywhere either. I see that with my daughter doing homework. She just gets overwhelmed sometimes with the homework. And then Mm -hmm. she's like, I can't do it. And we're like, what do you mean you can't do it? Right. And she's like, no, no, I can't do it. And and that's the shutdown. Me, I am huge at procrastivity. That is my (laughs) thing right there, right? It is productive procrastination. Right. So you're getting shit done. And a lot of it, but it might not necessarily be important important or in the order that it should be done. Like a long time ago, like somebody gave me a book and I read it and it's called like Eat That Frog. And mm-hmm. it was about like doing the thing that you don't want to do first thing in the day to get it out of the way to kind yep. of set the tone for your day. And I've always tried to carry that with me, but it's very, very, very hard to do when you have ADHD. And the thing about the procrastivity is that it it gives me like not only did I get to chunk stuff off, it's a dopamine booster mm-hmm. because I mean as Randy's walking in, she's like, oh check that out, check that out. I'm organizing stuff in yeah, my house. Yeah, she's got little piles all over the place of different projects. <laughs> I do. I've got all these projects yeah. started, but really I should be going through that whole pile for my taxes, right? Because um, that's important, and it's like on the business side of things too. Because I you know, run a business is that learning to um, 
I read that there's like um, a $10,000 idea and a $10 idea. Which one are you going to do that's going to yield the highest results for you, like financially or like professionally? And like, which one is just like, you don't really need to be doing it. And it's actually like probably taking away. And it's like with ADHD and task avoidance, you like to do all the little like $5 and $10. Like it feels ideas good. Because it feels good. It's easy to do and get out of the way. But you're you're not putting effort into like these $10,000 or $10 million ideas or tasks that could really like push you forward. And so it's kind of like, it's very hard. You have to learn how to flip your thinking. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, not being productive procrastination. (laughs) And again, that's when I joke that like, I'll be cleaning up my office and I'll go to the garage to put something away. And either my husband will find me reorganizing the screwdriver or, you know, drawer, or I'll be out in the garden, you know, doing something in the middle of winter. Right. Because you're getting instant gratification from that. And you know, you can 100% complete that. It's not having like really any major impact. You might not have to think a bunch about it. So you're like, okay. (laughs) It's also, uh, procrastivity is also very Mm hands-on. It's a physical thing. And so it's, I don't have to think when I'm organizing my medicine cabinet, right? Right. It's very physical. And so that's where some of that dopamine comes from. Yeah. Because I can touch it. I can move it. I could see it look pretty. That's true. And so that's the difference. So you're getting all those different senses filled. Yeah. So I am queen of that one. Like you said, like doing your taxes is not like something, especially if you don't like numbers, you know, and it's like a stress and it's like a law and there's like all these things that you feel like you have to uphold doing it. And it's just like, "Mm." well, and you know, I'm going to keep using the taxes because what that is, is I'm just putting stuff where it needs to be and it's not finished until like February right. when I send it off to my person. Yeah. So you're not getting that instant. It's like a long haul, like a long game, you know, and yeah. it's like hard because you can't see the end of it, the end reward with it. And, and half the time I have to pay. So it doesn't feel good. Right. So and with ADHD, we like we're good with rewards and consequences, especially rewards. rewards. Instant. Yeah. And so when we are not seeing like there's a reward, and like you said, at the end, there's a consequence. You have to pay your taxes. You're like, mm, do I want to do that? No, let's put that off as long as possible. Meanwhile, I'm going to go make my uh, glitter ornaments for Christmas, right? Because, yeah. right? you know, those are pretty and shiny. Yeah. So there are four different patterns of avoidance with people with ADHD, which I thought was really interesting, right? That is. Dr. Rostain uh, came up with four different types of avoidance. First one, anticipo- anti- I can't say it, you do it. Anticipatory avoidance. Ooh, do that again. <laughs> Anticipatory avoidance. It means that you amplify the difficulty of an upcoming tasks and you start to have like doubts and like probably like racing thoughts like that you will not be able to probably complete the task. So you rationalize and justify why you're procrastinating. So you're like, oh, shit, like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, this is going to be so hard. Like, oh, uh, like, th- I'm not going to get the result I want. And so then you're just like, yeah, so it's okay. I'm putting it off, right? right? I don't have enough time for that. So right. I'm going to save for when I do, which is I never want to do it. So it's putting off the immediate stress of it, like you said. So it's like a coping almost. But then you're creating this, you know, kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that it was going to be so overwhelming and you were never going to be able to complete it or it was going to be so stressful. And like, you don't really know that. That was me in college, grad school, right? Mm -hmm. Like that paper was going to take so long. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So I waited the night before, pulled an all-nighter. It was horrible. Well, it was horrible because I made it horrible, right. waiting to the last freaking minute yeah. and having to stay up all night to finish it. Yeah. And then we come almost addicted to that stress cycle, though, too. Yeah. Because we learn to live off of that. And then our body, like, we don't know how to deal without it. So, I mean, and that's very common in college and especially with us who are diagnosed later in life, like as women that becomes almost like a coping skill for us. And we just, that becomes our normal. Well, and that's what he calls number two, which is brinkmanship, right? That means you wait to the last possible moment before doing something or completing something, right? Mm -hmm. Especially stuff if you don't like doing it. I mean, that that right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially for kids and stuff like that. Or like you said, like that paper for school or it's like... Studying. Yeah, studying or things like that. And like, I used to be like, oh, yeah, that's my superpower that I can like get everything done at the last minute, you know, 
And it was like, that wasn't probably really a good tool to have. Well, because you feel like it helps you focus, right? Right. Uh, However, that stress and pressure that comes from the brakemanship, it's, you know, it's very not worth very not worth it yes it's very yeah, no, not it worth is. it that is technical very not worth it very not worth but, it um but yeah another thing to note is that like there's hardly any room for error when you're in that because you don't give yourself time to like go back and like check your work or like make sure or, like you know do another like draft or whatever it is mm-hmm. it's just like everything's like last minute and so sometimes that can create like more anxiety and like put you under more pressure to perform and you know and you might feel good at the end of it but probably the whole process leading up to that time frame where you were like stressing and cycling you're not feeling very good Number three is pseudo efficiency, which is kind of like my procrastinate procrastivity, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's the act of completing several easy, low priority things so I can avoid that big thing. Mm-hmm. But it feels good because I can check shit off. Well, this is me, and I still handwrite out lists so I can like write it off and physically oh. be like, I did it. I did it. I did it. And oftentimes I will put all the smaller stuff up at the top. Or if I've already done it, I'll write it on there and cross it off. So I feel like I got something done. And it's like, why am I doing this? (laughs) Well, and that's usually when we feel overwhelmed, right? We put Mm -hmm. all the little things on there. um, So that way we can cross it off. And it feels good. And like this, it's like avoiding... E- like with email and social media, checking things. I'm just going to check. Do you know how long they say you waste checking your email? It takes, when you go to check just one email, it can take you 26 minutes to get back on task. Wow. That is a lot of wasted time. And they were saying like we check our email like X amount of times a day. I can't remember. It was like, I don't even know, like five times a day. So if five times a day you're checking your email and it's taking you 26 plus minutes to get back on task. So what I've done like professionally too is like I mute my emails and yes. I only check it once a day. I check mine more than that, but I every I don't have any notifications. Yeah, no. I don't have anything. I have to actually go and look for it. And I try to do it, you know, maybe once or twice a day, depending. I mean, mm-hmm. usually there's nothing major crisis or they'll call. The other one I'm also notorious for doing is what he calls juggling, mm-hmm. right? You take on multiple things at oh, once. Yeah. yeah. Don't know how to say no to things. <laughs> right. You know, and it's extremely popular with people with ADHD because yeah. that new task gives you the dopamine rush. We love our dopamine. Well, yeah. And Jess and I love doing this too. We're always like, oh, we got a great idea for this. Oh, let's do this. Oh, let's host this. Oh, let's throw a party for this. <laughs> right? And the next thing you know, we're like, why did we say yes to all yeah, that? Why well, did we create that? Uh-huh. We did that. Because <laughs> you feel excited and motivated, but then you can get so overwhelmed because you have so much going on at the same time. So it's important to learn with yourself too, like boundaries. Exactly. Boundaries yeah. it, with yourself. Right. And also like this can kind of lead to like half-assing like a lot of things too, because it's like you have like so many, what do they say, like sticks in the fire, irons in the fire. And like, so it's like you can't tend to like certain things like fully because your attention is divided all over the place. Right. And you're like, no, 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 but I can, t- I can, I can do all of it. Yeah. So how do we address this? How do we cope with this? What kind of skills do we need to kind of combat this? So there are three um, that I like to teach and, and use. Uh, the first one is Rain, uh, created by Tara, Tara Brack, Brack, I think is Brock. what her name is. Brock. And it's basically mindfulness, right? Because first of all, you have to be mindful of what is happening mm-hmm. so you can catch it. You want to run us through the acronym of Rain? Sure. Rain is R, recognize, A, allow. I investigate and N, nurture. So what that stands for is recognizing what is happening. That's the R. Like notice your emotions, what's happening, like we talked about in a previous episode, uh, learning your warning signs, like physical, Mm -hmm. emotional, um, your triggers, and what is the task that you're trying to avoid? And then A is allow. And what does that go into just? What that goes into is, and I'm just going to laugh if y'all can hear the puppy in the background. (laughs) He is just having so much fun. Okay. (laughs) So what that allowing the experience to be there is is really is don't try and like, I guess, don't change the feelings. Mm. Just be very present with whatever it is that you're feeling, even if it's uncomfortable, because you have to recognize what is bringing this up. And then that leads to end, which is nurture yourself. I mean, we... Well, no, I... Did I... Oh, 
Next See, I can't I. spell. I can't spell. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to rant and not She's rain. She's going to rant. See? I'm going to rant. You are, t- you're just jumping. You're doing task avoidance. Again, you're just, she's like, no, I'm not going to investigate. And I'm just going to nurture interest myself. interest and care. Yeah. I'm just going to go straight to the self-pampering. Thank you. Um, which is uh, also a, a task avoidance. avoidance yes. I'm going to go get a massage or take a bubble bath or whatever right. instead of doing this. All right. So, so let's go back to rain. <laughs> so the eyes investigate, right? Why do I feel this way? Yeah. Right? Why am I avoiding this? What is going on with me? What is this big emotion that I'm having? Yeah. And then you can nurture yourself. Then you can nurture <laughs> yourself because part of this is understanding why you feel this way. That's yeah. funny. I want to ran. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And so once you can figure all of that out, the next thing is using SMART goals. Mm -hmm. I always teach SMART goals in therapy as well. SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. No, I think time-bound is important to know, especially with ADHD, because we can have time blindness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's go through. What does specific mean? So uh, for SMART, specific means any goal you set needs to be very clear-cut very concise, very precise. You need to be basically black and white with yourself. You don't want to set some like lofty goal Mm -hmm. that is not attainable. You don't know how to achieve. Um, You need to be able to define it and know that you can achieve it. So it's not like, I'm going to go to France and make, you know, a special French pastry one day. Like, no, let's say I'm going to go to the store and pick up some ingredients to teach myself how to make this one specific French pastry. Okay, let's break it down so that it's a small, achievable, understandable goal for yourself that you can actually like move through. And then you want to be able to measure that. And that is you need to have specific parameters for it. So maybe like, mm. well, it's like, how do you monitor your goals? How do you know? Right. Let's do weight loss, right? I'm okay. going to lose 100 pounds, right? Okay, well, how how are you going to do that? Yeah. So how is how are you going to measure that you're doing that and right? achieving it and achieve right. it is I'm going to aim for one pound a week. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to do it. No. Right. And so it's having it very measurable. So that way, when you you can look at it and say, how, how am I doing with this? Right. right. And it can be anything, even if it is going to France to make that pastry. Right. How it am can, I going to get But it's there? like, what are the steps, you know, that, and is this, can you financially, like, really, you need to, like, break it down. Will I be able to do this? Okay, maybe you can make that goal, like, a five-year goal or things like that mm-hmm. if you want to measure it in that time frame, too, you know? So make sure that you have those steps. And it needs to be attainable, which that means it needs to be realistic because why are you going to set yourself up for failure by by making goals that you might never be able to achieve? That's going to create a stress cycle. Right. Like if I have no desire to go to France and make a pastry because I can't cook, then why would I tell myself I'm going to go do that? Yeah. The other thing is making it relevant. Mm -hmm. And that's huge for ADHD. Make it so it's it works for what you're doing. Yeah. Because so many times we're like, you know, I think I'm going to work on this. And you're like, why? That has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. Yeah. Like what's the focus? What is this going to help you achieve? Like Mm kind of like what's the end goal of this? And then circle that back into the time bound. And so you need to have a also realistic time frame. Right. And and being kind to yourself about that time frame. Mm -hmm. This might take, you know, we'll go back to that five years. Right. Right. It might be every year we look at it. How are we doing towards our goal? Mm -hmm. Right. It could be something that's very, you know, it's going to keep us on track and motivated, but be real. You know, I'm not going to lose 100 pounds in a month. Right. That's, yeah, that's what I was going to say too. Like sometimes we can have like these goals and if we don't have a time frame or all this smart goals going along with it, like, how are we going to get there? You right. know, and like you said, like, you might say, like, I'm going to lose it in six months. And it's like, is that realistic? Is that the normal? Probably not. So it's like, let's be kind to ourselves and give our- ourselves like, I would say to myself, like, okay, well, it took me 20 years to gain this weight. Mm-hmm. So it might take me, you know, 10 years to relearn, you know, how to be healthy and like set a new cycle and lose, you know, weight and things like that. So it's like being realistic and being that. realistic. I think my favorite out of these three, though, is really chunking. Yeah, that's that's what I do most of the time mm-hmm. is is chunking. I think because it's not like the goals and stuff. I, I I'm very big on goals, but it can be another huge like burden, almost like a task that you need to complete. 
And so it's like, it's sometimes it's hard to sit down and do that. So I it like is, chunking too. It is for me. And so chunking yeah. is basically taking a large complex task and breaking it down into smaller pieces or chunks. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, easy. And they should be small and specific. If you're going to do a trust now for you and your husband, you have to break it down. Right. Like, okay, so like I need to call like an attorney. Okay, like I need to research this. Like I need to do this. Like you said, like breaking it down into more manageable tasks Mm -hmm. so that it's not so overwhelming. And this is what I do with things that I like to avoid too, like majorly like finances or like taxes Mm -hmm. or things like that. Like, okay, I'll call the tax person today. Like, okay, like a next week, like I'll sit down and go over the numbers for this month, you know, and things like that. So that it's like, I get to the point where I've avoided it so long. And then there's like this panic to do it cleaning the bathroom, Mm -hmm. right? If I say I'm going to clean the bathroom, you know, what does that mean? Okay, we're going to empty out the trash can. Right. I'm going to take everything off the counters. Yeah, I'm going to wipe down the counter then. I'm going to wipe down the mirror. I'm going to scrub the toilet. Sometimes we need to break it down into those things, especially if we are having an episode, if we're depressed, if we're anxious, if we're in an ADHD, you know, cycle or whatever like that, if you're manic or anything like this, you can apply it like, okay, I just need to take like one breath at a time, one step at a time, one task at a time. One of the things I like to do and that I teach with my clients too is I call it a brain dump. I don't know officially what it is, mm-hmm. um, but it really takes the idea of chunking down. Yeah. Um, is really like for ADHD for me, I have these things that float around in my brain. Oh, yeah. So I put them on a piece of paper. I put them on a notepad. There yeah. is no organization. It is not pretty. No. It's just my brain on a, pe- a pad of paper. And then from there is when I will start breaking that down and chunking it down Mm -hmm. because some of those things are big, Yes. right? And they may take me a while to do. And so if I can chunk it, I can feel, this is probably my procrastivity, but I can feel that I am getting things done and I can feel like I am on top of it. I think that this is great. I've been teaching myself this too on the business side and, you know, personal life too, is that I think I was talking to you about too, about reading like the second brain book. And it's the same thing because this applies to a lot of like CEOs and like magnets and like billionaires and stuff and creative types like, and people often who are ADHD like this, like you have so many ideas and they're all over the place. And like, um, we love to research and we, mm-hmm. and there's so much information out there now too. It can be so overwhelming with like the internet and all the sources that we have. And it's kind of like, same thing, like putting this kind of all into a huge brain dump and then piecing it out or letting things go or like being like, okay, this is important. I should keep this. And so I have like a major kind of second brain spreadsheet where I keep like all my information and stuff like that. Way more organized than I can be. Well, I can, I can just write it down on a pad of paper. Well, I do that. But he was saying like, it's very typical, the guy who wrote the book, you know, about having like, we have all these different ways to take notes, like on paper, digitally, like in a spreadsheet, like, you know, text messages, whatever. I have like 50,000 notebooks too, but it's kind of trying to teach ourselves to like narrow the focus. So mm. we do have it in one place because we spend so much time looking for information. That's true. And Which like I was talking about like the emails and like mm-hmm. how it takes, they were saying like probably like at least like six hours a week, people at work are looking for information to help them. So you're not being as productive as you could be if you learned how to kind of source it all together. And with ADHD, that's very hard because we are not good sourcers. <laughs> right. Or we get stuck in the rabbit holes where right. you're like, I'm going to research this. Next thing you know, it's three mm-hmm. hours later because right. of time blindness. Right. And now we're like, you know, learning about something new that had mm-hmm. nothing to do with what with we original, original thought. Yeah. So, but yeah, brain dumps, I find that's what I teach a lot of times Mm -hmm. is so it doesn't swirl in your brain anymore. Yeah, getting it in the black and white on the paper Mm -hmm. and stuff too. And they say that too about goals too. Like if you write it down and you see it in black and white, sometimes it helps you like achieve them and visualize them and move forward. Right. And and there's something about writing it versus just sticking it in my phone. Mm-hmm. Right. If I handwrite it, I can remember that I did that. If I stick it in my phone, I have no idea where I put it. I have nothing. And then yes. I'm looking through Randy's text messages, right. seeing if it's somewhere in there. Yeah. And I'm very much like I have to handwrite everything over and over again. I think that's another thing with like ADHD is like 
getting it out of your head onto the paper and then like reiterating it again, Mm -hmm. like you're writing it out again. So you're like enforcing it. So these are just some tools that we use to help move forward and not avoid all the major life tasks that we need to do. And I'll put these up. We can go ahead and put up a couple of these different ones. So people will have smart goals, have a spreadsheet for it or sheet for it. They can decide if they can do rain. I mean, yeah. these are in chunking out. I yeah. mean, these are just really good ways to kind of keep you on track, yeah. especially with the new year coming. And keep them in your toolbox for yeah. the upcoming year and test out. See what works for you, what doesn't work. We're not saying this is like all like trial and error with like everything. You need to see what works for your brain and your life and the way that you move through things. And there's nothing wrong with trying new things nope. like this. And there's nothing wrong with tossing it out if it doesn't work for you. Or just taking bits and pieces of what does work yeah. for you as well. Yeah. So. And making your own, you know, kind of thing maybe you know only one of these sections works for you that's fine that's what we're talking about here is like you don't need to fit into a box nope. you know you can use different types of tools you can make it work for you don't be afraid to try those things and step outside of the box exactly exactly all right have a great week we will see you guys next week yeah we'll uh talk to you guys next wednesday bye one, two, three, thanks for listening and normalizing mental health with us Don't forget to check out our free resources and favorites on our website, unapologeticallyrandyandjess.com. Like and share this episode and tune in next week.